Good morning. Today is the 12th Sunday in ordinary time. Our Mass this morning is being offered for all of our fathers. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him in your heart and pray. And do thou, O friends in the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world will succeed in the world's souls. Amen. Please rise and greet Father God.
O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial song, Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. For, for your sake, I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's children, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme, you fall upon me. Lord, Lord your great love, love answer me. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me. With your constant help, answer me, O Lord, for bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn toward me. Lord, in your great love, love answer, me. answer me. See your lowly ones and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds, he spurns not. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. Lord, Lord in your great love, answer me. We are 
blessed, even though all the circumstances of the spring, that we still get a summer seminarian. And you know that parishes just don't get a summer seminarian. A parish has to offer something to their formation. And so we are very blessed that we have a seminarian with us. Some of his duties will be slightly changed because, you know, we still can't do hospitals or nursing homes or communion halls. But we're going to find other ways to keep him busy. So, James, would you like to say hello to the people? Good morning, everyone. I've had the pleasure of 
leading stations of the cross here. And I'm looking forward to additional activities that will continue to keep me more involved here in St. Clair. As an example, Father Bill has invited me, along with my wife, to recite the rosary on a regular basis. As Catholics, we know how beautiful and how powerful our prayers to the Queen of the Universe are. More information on our, this call to uh, our Heavenly Mother and other ministerial activities I may be assigned will follow in upcoming bulletins. But back to the diaconate formation and my summer project. Our assigned project for this summer is to conduct a drive for local Catholic charities. Thankfully, Father Bill is on board with this project. Our drive will run from June 27th, so that's next Saturday, through July 19th. It's four weekends. And we're looking for maybe an infant bite. A diapers, bottles, baby wipes, onesies, uh, maybe shampoo and the like. Bins will be placed in the church starting with Mass next Saturday. More information will be in next week's bulletin. Again, it is special when the fruits of a charitable drive stay local. We are in very trying and difficult times. But if you can help, even in the slightest, your participation will truly be appreciated. Thank you, and go with God. Thanks, John. Um, John mentioned that he's one of 19 for the diocese. One thing he hasn't mentioned to you is the fact that when he began two years ago, there were 60 aspirants. So you can get an idea how stringent the program is and how much introspection is done. So we're grateful for his commitment thus far and also the fact for, for Mary for, for being so kind because it is an awful lot of time that cuts into their family life. We have a, a letter from uh, the bishop, my boss, to be read at all masses. Dear parishioners of St. Clair of Assisi Parish, since 2008, when several parishes in this area were consolidated into St. Clair of Assisi Parish, St. Clair, the former parish belonging to the former parish church building of Immaculate Conception has been used to celebrate Holy Mass once annually upon the occasion of the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception and also for funeral rites conducted for former parishioners of Immaculate Conception. Over these past 12 years, there has been a significant decline in the number of people attending the annual Mass at that building, and also a significant decline in the number of funerals in that sacred space. At the same time, the costs associated with properly maintaining the church building can no longer be borne by the treasury of St. Clair Vizizi Parish, and the parish is unable to raise sufficient funds cover that cost. Maintaining a church building that has so little use has become a significant hardship for the people of St. Clair of Assisi Parish. Recognizing these realities, Monsignor Glosser consulted his parish council and his finance council before seeking my permission to close the church building of the former Immaculate Conception Parish. After consulting the Pastoral Planning Commission, and the Diocesan Council of Priests, I have issued a decree closing Immaculate Conception Church building effective 1 July 2020. Monsignor Glosser will have this decree available for your review after Mass if you so desire. All sacred images, vessels, furnishings, and especially altars will be removed from the church building and preserved for its continued use by St. Clair of Assisi Parish or by another Catholic parish or institution. All these proceeds from the sale of the former church building or any items, including any stained glass windows that may be sold as a result from this action, will be retained by St. Clair of Assisi Parish. These proceeds will not go to the Diocese of Allentown. I ask during this time of preparation for the implementation of this decision 
that you will join me in fervent prayer to God and to Mary, Mother of the Church, our diocesan patroness, that the good work that God has begun in you will, through his grace and his faith, be brought to a successful completion. Sincerely yours in Christ, Alfred A. Schwert, Bishop of Allentown. This letter is also found in the bulletins for this weekend. Uh, there will be a letter next weekend from me going into a few more details about, you know, what's going on in the parish. This decision was not an easy decision for me to make, and it was made in consultation with many others. But uh, over the years, when we first began this, we had a lot of funerals. Uh, you know, we only had one funeral, which was last year in that building. Uh, we had one we could have had there this present year, but it was in the process that we were swapping out the lights, uh, so we couldn't have it. Um, it's important to realize that, you know, I think every one of us agree the blessing of bringing these lights from down in Immaculate up here. You know, I was going to get coal miners almost for the rest of us from the other lights. But yet the lights that we took from here were sold for, and I did not ask an awful lot of money for them, were sold to a little church down in the Caribbean that was destroyed by one of the hurricanes last year. They needed lights, and you know we sent them our lights, and uh, you know the pastor down there is very grateful. The Stations of the Cross, the statue of the P.A. Pop, which also came from Immaculate, um, they were wasting away not only in their beauty, but in the fact that they, they started to really need some work. And so by moving them up here, we have not lost these treasures. And we still will be able to maintain the memory of Immaculate Conception throughout our entire history as a parish here in St. Clair. So I, I hope you, you know, aren't too upset by the decision. It has been uh, close to 13 years, and sometimes some things have to happen but it was, it's really starting to affect us financially. And I need to be concerned that we remain financially solid to continue our mission and all that we must do. Before I forget, because I didn't do it at the last Mass, Happy Father's Day. And just, just a short reflection. We, we hear in the Gospel today that Jesus tells us to fear no one. And he said, the only one that we should really fear is the one that can destroy both our body and soul in Gehenna. But yet, as a people, don't we really have a, a, a fixation or a predisposition to fear? Um, it's a terrible anxiety, and it's over simple things. You know, the fear of getting old. Uh, the fear of, in this violent society, being assaulted. Uh, we've lived now through a pandemic, and we're still going through it. And there's still great fear. You know, for instance, just in Pottsville this past week, one of the convenience stores is shut down until they can sanitize because they've had cases of someone bringing coronavirus into the store. There was one of the local banks where someone came in with the coronavirus. So it's out there. It has a face that we can't see. We can't see it. We can't smell it. And it becomes problematic. And, you know, the last thing we want to do is sit here with the air conditioning on and the windows open. That's what we have to do. We don't want to sanitize our clothes after masks. And certainly we don't want to have to wear these silly masks. But it's to protect us from anybody that, that might come in, you know, and, and do us some harm. Uh, not willfully, but do us some harm. Uh, this terrible problem of racism is coming back again. And that's a scary thing, that we can be that people, that prejudice, where we could actually want to physically do violence to someone because they look a little bit different from us. And sadly to say, there's powers to be that, that encourage that. So these anxieties are present, 
in our midst today in so many different ways. They're very real. But how do we get over that? How do we cope with that? Well, do you remember that sort of stupid song by, by Ray Rep who recently died back in the 60s, the early 70s? We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. You know, why are we one in the Spirit and one in the Lord? Well, because of our love. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. And we'll walk hand in hand because we are Christians. Every act of generosity and kindness that you and I perform for someone, even someone who does damage to us, robs fear of its authority. It diminishes it. We all need to emulate virtues like love and kindness and inclusion and generosity because that defeats the power of fear that destroys the soul. During all of this time of fear, let us be encouragers. Let us be people of generosity and kindness. Because it's through that that we proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as Jesus says today, fear no one, because I am always with you. I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, the God from the God, the God not made, unsubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us then, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was born of the Virgin Mary, and it became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is glory and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess on the baptism and forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord listens to the needy. He is always ready with help that never fails. We have only to ask. So let us seek the compassion of the one who cherishes even the smallest sparrow. For the church, which depends the abundance of free gift of divine grace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations enslaved by sinful systems of obsession and terror, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women who are tormented by fear and worry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women to serve the call of the to be priests and religious, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have come into the presence of our Father, especially uh, all of the all of the uh, fathers who passed away, let us pray to the Lord. Father of all creation, we commit our cause to you and praise you for caring for us and our need by giving us your own Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. To the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
us in hope in the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Gracious and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord.
after Mass to help sanitize the pews, we'd certainly appreciate it. And um, James is going to help me with communion. He'll be over in the far corner. I'll be over in this corner. Just please remember to socially distant, and then you can exit the church unless you're going to hang around either to talk with one of us or to, uh, to help sanitize me. 